Okay, so a panhard bar is very simple as far as suspensions go. All it does is it eliminates any side-to-side -side movement between the frame and the axle. You can see right now if I push this back and forth, there's a lot of movement there um, on top of the axle. So if you were to drive like that, whenever you went around a corner, the body and the frame would be like shifting side-to-side -side above the axle like that. And it'd be really bad for handling and it'd be like a weird experience. So it's best to eliminate that as much as you can. So what a pan hard bar is, I have it laid out here, kind of laid out with a piece of um, conduit. But it's a, it's a linkage that connects the frame and the axle. Um, so what, how I'm going to be doing it is I'm going to build a bracket over here. It'll be the solid rod that mounts to the frame on this side, travels all the way across, and then mounts to the axle on that side. So that will completely eliminate the side-to-side -side movement, but it will still let it go up and down. And it will be moving in a very slight arc, obviously, since that's just one, one rod. It's, the frame is going to move in that very slight arc, so it's not going to be straight up and down. But it will be, it'll be close enough that you really won't be able to tell a difference. There's other um, setups that you can use, like a Watts link or a triangulated four-link suspension that also eliminate that side-to-side -side movement. Um, but a pan hard bar is the simplest, easiest way to do that. Um, it's, it has the least amount of moving parts, so that's what I'm going to go with.
Alright, so we got the panhard bar installed there now. You can see it runs from this drop bracket on the frame right here all the way across and mounts to that side of the axle. And we still have the same exact suspension action as before, but now there's no side to side movement at all. So that will make the rear end of the car much more stable. Uh, right now everything is just tacked together. I didn't weld up anything entirely yet because I don't know if I'll eventually have to change something. But you can clearly see how it works just from this. And ideally the bar should be exactly horizontal at ride height. I think right now it slopes a little bit down that way because obviously this car isn't finished yet so it's not at ride height. But I was hoping that uh, once there's a little bit more weight on here it'll flatten out and this side will move down a little bit and it should get pretty close to horizontal. And if you are curious about how much side to side motion you would get because it is moving on that arc, it's not exactly straight up and down, it's some pretty simple trigonometry to work that out. Um, this is a 40 inch uh, bar and I calculated based on 4 inches of travel from ride height in one direction, which is the amount of travel it takes to actually bottom out the frame on the axle here. Uh, that would translate to about 0.2 inches of side to side movement. And that's not nearly big enough to, to notice or anything. So this should work out pretty nicely. It's very simple compared to a Watts link or a, a triangulated four ball suspension. I don't even have room for that up here because the seat's so far back. Uh, but anyways, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.